Got a good one for you guys today. We are up near Sioux Falls, South Dakota at Wallace Manufacturing, putting in a press brake and a shear for Joe Wallace. So you can see what these guys are making here are a lot of these uh, livestock panels like, you know, gates, wind brakes, uh, UTV gate openings, um, you know, feeder troughs, chutes, you know, the whole deal. You can see the slideshow you're, we're looking at. So I asked Joe, you know, what time he wanted to get started on the first day there. And he was like, ah, you know, we'll let me get all of the trucks loaded out. And, uh, and that way I can have more time. So anytime you go to a place and they're loading out multiple trucks in a day, you know, it's a serious operation with uh, a lot of volume going on there. So what you're looking at is a 13 foot wide shear with a capacity of three eighths thick steel. And what the guys, you can see Joe on the left there, kind of runs the show. Uh, his name's on the building, so to speak. Um, so this is a piece of a uh, sheet of 3 sixteenths, a 12 foot, I think it was a six by 12 sheet of 3 sixteenths. And you know, this shear is just shearing it off like butter. So one of the things that you have, that happens when you buy a new brake is almost always, you immediately run into the limitations of stock tooling. Joe was smart enough when he ordered this brake, we added a gooseneck punch. Uh, and, and so gooseneck punches give you a lot of flexibility with regard to, you know, how tight of a bend you can make, you know, like making this channel right here, you could not make this with a straight punch that comes in the machine. You see the relief where the channel can fold back up on itself. Now you can see on the end profile there that that looked a little bit open. This was after some correction and rebending and it really tightened it up and made it perfect. And the guys went ahead and bent like four or five more while we were on that. So Joe elected to get this uh, tooling cart and um, I'm gonna be starting to stock these and offer these more, but these are $1,750, really heavy duty made, you know, stainless steel trays, uh, you know, thick material in the cabinet, you know, just for the weight to be able to support the heavy tooling. Pretty nice setup. So you can see all the guys running around in there and just how busy they are. And uh, so anyway, um, this, this brake is a 13 foot, 220 ton. And I've shown one other one for CSM production previously in, uh, in my videos, but very, very nice setup. It's got the Dellum DA53T four plus one axis. And it's perfect for a shop or an environment like this, you know, where you don't need something overly fancy or overly complicated, but you need something that is repeatable, accurate, fast, easy to program. You know, it's it's like the perfect setup. Joe's got an older, I think it was a Cincinnati or a Standard, or I can't remember which one it was, like a, a 12 foot break in there. Um, a lot of guys ask me about those older brakes and should they get one. And from what I've found is, I mean, I love the look of old school iron, anything old school. But if you're in the business of trying to make money, those kind of older brakes can be a real headache. They're not accurate. Who knows what's happened to them over their life, lifetime. And even though they're heavy built, if, if you abuse them and bend things in them that you're not supposed to bend, you can deflect the ram plate. And now your overall accuracy is, uh, is affected. So um, I, I, when people contact me and ask me about the older brakes, I really don't recommend them because Several other people are buying brakes from me that have gone down that route and found that they just, you know, if, if it's a hobby or you just need to make a bend every now and then, sure, no problem. But if you're trying to make money, you got jobs coming in and out and, you know, small production runs and that kind of thing, and you just want to make parts and not work on the machine, then I'd suggest getting something, you know, that's not been used and abused. Being so, if you cut them deeper, Probably be a little less bowed at three, four inches, but.
You on the right step? Yeah, we are. Okay. Uh. You're on the four. Yep. Okay. So you'll notice a couple of these, you know, like when we're trying different materials, like immediately there'll be, uh, the bin looks like it's open or closed, you know, and that's just part of owning a press brake, you know, right beside in the controller where it lets you put the angle right beside it. It's got a spot for correction on the, on the left and right side. So it's very common, you know, whether you have this kind of press brake from me or a $500,000, you know, ATC. Mitsubishi, they all work off of a target angle plus a correction, you know, because different parts of the world, different parts of the country, material thickness, mill scale thickness, you know, condition of the machine, temperature of the hydraulic fluid, ambient temperature in the shop, they're all factors. So you have to kind of, quote, dial in the bin to get it perfected. It's super easy to do.